to have the technique then, to be ruthless. Well, of course you have, you have to have be able to use of the course, words ruthlessly. Of course you have to have technique, yeah. And how did you come how did you come to have such dexterity and skill with the words? I see your skill with the words like Patty Crane's skill with a sword. You can take a word and place it anywhere, both with will and power, but also with blood and... Yeah, well, and I think it started when I was young. My, my family, my mom, mom, they adored writing. They adored poetry, and they instilled in me at a very young age a, a, a love for language. This is before the Cyclops eye of television had mm -hmm. insinuated itself into our lives. And uh, so we read, actually, <laughs> Strange, a funny old-fashioned thing called reading. And I think it started then. I, I loved poetry, and I learned reams of it when I was a kid. Why? Why? Because I loved the sound of it. I loved the, I loved the music it made. It, uh, I, I loved the sort of romance of it, of language, and the <coughs> and the imaginary uh, world that it created for you. It was a wonderful escape. So you said it to yourself, uh, said it out loud in your room or on the street or? Oh yeah, I'd do it anywhere. Also in the classroom. I, I would actually do bits of Henry V in the classroom. And in high school? In high school. And they'd throw things at me, you know, I'd have a, to throw books at me. But sometimes I could silence them, I noticed, if I yelled at them loud enough. And how do you investigate a word? How do you get into a word? Well, I, I, I love um, stresses, uh, things that don't, that don't interest most actors today because they, they just want to be real. You know. and, and what is being real anyway? If you want to be real, you've got to be real with the words as well as the character you're playing. And uh, my mom was a great friend of Martha Allen's who, who ran the, the MRT. And uh, she was sort of like a Canadian Lillian Bayless, actually, Martha Allen. And in fact, started most of the young actors of that time who went on to become, you know, quite important in their careers. This is in Montreal. In Montreal, at the, Mo the Montreal, Montreal Repertory Re Theatre. Right. And she founded it. She had money, Martha Allen. and. Uh, she did it all, and she brought directors in from everywhere. And it, although it was an amateur organization, it had a very professional ring to it. And, and people who came from England admired it very much. They, they, um, uh, so I think we grew up, in a sense, with, with poetry. And a very lovely lady called Eleanor Stewart, who was a voice coach, a very important voice coach in this country, taught us also how to speak taught me, John Colicos, um, how to, she was, she was a wonderful shaper of words. Do you remember for, what for she said art. about words? Do you remember how she taught you? <laughs> well, I, she would let you, she didn't talk very much, which was so wonderful. She'd just let you go hang yourself, and then she would say, now I want you to do it again and again, and she would do it. You would do it again and again until she felt that you had obeyed the rhythm sufficiently, so then you could be natural with it. She was very modern, way ahead of her time, strangely enough, even though she as a person didn't particularly appear modern. She was rather old-fashioned. And did she talk about rib reserve breathing and resonators and...? Yes, she, she did up to a point. Um, she, when you were having trouble saying all those words and keeping your know, breath control, she would go over to you and place, you know, a hand and, and show you what it felt like when you really did it correctly. You could do a whole speech on one breath, which is, uh, right. which is the way to learn how to do it. Uh, so all those sort of people who were influenced by a, a theater, a bygone theater, that there was a link that I grew up with, you see, a link with the past that help, helped me appreciate the past. And it felt a little closer to the sort of 19th century kind of acting that must have gone on. And I, I felt that I would have, I've always wanted, wished I could have seen uh, Irving or, or uh, John Martin Harvey, like my mother had seen them. You know. I was so jealous of her, she'd seen all these people, Sarah Bernhardt, and, 
and Eleanor Duse, they should seen them all. I mean, so unconsciously was, then, those 19th century performers in some way inspired you on some level. Yes, I think they, and they, it's not just me, I think they've inspired quite a lot of people of my, my contemporaries who in, uh, uh, instinctively, without them perhaps knowing it, you know. They're because the other thing are you, very you, much alive. The other thing that you have as a performer, which is unique in a way to the Anglo-Saxon world, is you have a glee about performing. You have a twinkle in your eye. Oh, I think you have to enjoy it, otherwise get out of it. I, I have enormous fun. You're absolutely right. I have enormous fun on stage when I'm happy in a role. Even when I'm not happy in a role, I'm still I'm determined to have fun so that the audience can relax, or, or at least that the audience can have fun, even if, I'm, even if I'm terrible in the part. <laughs>